do yeah, that. Yeah. That's a good possibility yeah, you yeah. see me out here. Yeah. Good deal. Okay. Well, good. As we get started, this is the kitchen cutter. Um, it's been around since 1902. It's actually older than the cookware, which you see right here. As you, uh, uh, What they did, it was actually designed for the American farmer to cut their vegetables real fast. Nobody wanted to spend the rest of their lives, uh, you know, doing one of these numbers, cutting up vegetables. So what they did was they designed it so all you had to do was turn a handle and this would cut your vegetables very quick and very fast just like you see right here now a lot of people ask me they say will that machine cut your fingers yes it will but i don't recommend it i like you to keep your fingers out of there that kind of hurts now change you gotta do me a favor you do have to sit though because the people will be in the back and they may want to come in and they won't do it if you're standing now as i show this everybody out here turn the handle just like you see right here there are no blades judy on the inside so there's no blades on the inside now, it won't hurt you on the outside either, just like that. You just don't want to put your hand on the inside to real hard. You will get what they call hamburger. <laughs> That's spelled H-A-N-D-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E okay, don't do that. Now, here's my favorite thing about this machine. It is the only one you'll love this on the planet. There's some wonderful features. One is it has three speeds. Slow medium <laughs> and fast okay it actually has three speeds all you have to do is turn the handle to cut your vegetables just like you see right there no blades on the inside now when you get yours home there's actually five cones i'm only going to use three here in the introduction of course that there's a there's a french fry cut slicer cuts they do the normal thing this is my favorite one right here and each cone has a number on the bottom of it the number on the bottom tells you what kind of cut like this is the ruffle cut that's the number five cone this one will julian cut so it will julian cut your vegetables just by doing this so it's going to julian cut your vegetables right there something a lot of people never notice with this machine it has a lifetime warranty on the motor <laughs> okay. Oh, some, some of these jokes you'll get tomorrow. They'll be funnier tomorrow. Okay. Anyway, the last one we show you is the shredder cone. This thing will do cheeses, crackers, coconut, chocolate, anything that you want to shred. It's going to shred it up for you just like you see right there. Now, what we've done here is a little bit of a baby introduction with the kitchen cutter. Uh, things you're seeing me do up here is the cleanup. I'm not a fan of dishes. I've never been a fan of doing dishes. So if I could take most of our equipment and rinse it off, we were done. So we're done, we're finished up. Now we're out of the kitchen. Now, that's my introduction. How am I doing so far? Okay, now we're ready to go. See that why I made that sign up? Oh, by the way, Judy, we do give away a beautiful door prize at the end of the show. If we start getting people to sit down, we will hand out tickets, but right now your chance of winning is looking really good. <laughs> You, you just have to hope nobody else sits down. That way you you and I get to eat all the food. I'll tell you, that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I, could you tell I love what I do? I have so much fun with everybody. <laughs> anyway, this many years out here. Anyway, as we get started, we do talk a lot about other Trisha. I will ask you all some questions. As I ask you some questions, uh, uh, you might want to find out what you do and do not know about your nutritional values and foods. Uh, we start with the carrots. They did a study a while back at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. What they found out is that people that have high cholesterol, cancer, heart problem, type 2 diabetes were all in the same category. They were not regular vegetable eaters and they ate out a whole lot. What I'm trying to do is get everybody back to the home. That's where it started in the first place in our world, and we got away from it, our home cooking. So we start with the carrots, just like beta carotene. Now, do either one of you know what vegetable is the highest fighting form against cancer than any other vegetable that there is? Which one do you think fight cancer than any other vegetable? Well, I'd probably say kale or Okay, what would you say? Squash. Uh, you, you both are good answers. The answer was broccoli. Ah, broccoli. Broccoli is one of those foods that people either overcook, undercook, yeah. and in today's world, people are trying to change the flavor to butter and cheese. <laughs> as crazy as it is. Now, broccoli, though, here now, wait, listen to this. Broccoli is loaded with vitamin D. And there's a reason why I'm telling you that. Not that we're going to have a test. <laughs> There'll be no test at the end of the show, but there's a reason why I'm telling you, loaded with vitamin D. Now, the other one you're gonna see me put out here is the highest fiber vegetable you can put in your body is cabbage. 
If you want to fight internal cancers, colon cancer, breast cancer, I tell people eat lots of cabbage. I do give cabbage a nickname. We call it our two by two by two foods, meaning that's a food that takes two hours to cook. You can smell it from two blocks away when you're cooking it. And after you eat it, I'm going to assure you, you're probably going to smell it again. <laughs> I wouldn't laugh about that real hard. That gives you away. Now, the other one we're going to add, uh, either one of you type 2 diabetics at all. Okay, I ask that question because corn is not one of those foods you want to indulge in as a type 2 diabetic. It is loaded with sugar and carbohydrates. Okay, now, here's the thing. Everybody loves it. It's sweet. It tastes good. I call it the dessert of vegetables. The other one we're going to cook up here, we're going to add people either love it or they hate it. There's no in between with Brussels sprouts. I love it. Okay, Brussels sprouts. And Baker, I tell people if you're gonna, you want to lose some weight, you go green, you go lean. It's real simple mathematics to be able to do right there. Brussels sprouts is loaded, and you're gonna laugh when I tell you, with vitamin C. There's more vitamin C in Brussels sprouts than there actually is in oranges. Did you know that? And, and so we're going to add that vitamin C to our diet. And also, by the way, just like cabbage, it's loaded with fiber as well. There's going to be one more I'm going to add to my medley right here. And you may be surprised. It is another one of those foods. Most people love them or like them. It's not That's an in-between one. And that is the mushroom. Okay, she goes, oh, I don't like mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Okay. You like mushrooms? Good. Mushrooms are loaded with another. It doesn't have vitamin C. It doesn't have vitamin D. It is loaded, you're gonna be surprised, with zinc. Okay, now, why am I telling you this? Because if either one of you did your homework during COVID, there were three things they told us to take before, during, and after COVID. One of them was vitamin C, the other one was vitamin D, and the other was zinc. zinc. All three are in the pan right here. Now, I do get a lot of people say, well, Mark, I, I, I still like mushrooms. That's okay, let me help. Because if you don't like mushrooms, I'm going to show you something else. Pumpkin seeds are loaded with zinc. Now, you want to spruce up, spice up your vegetables every so often? Add pumpkin seeds. It's the craziest thing you've ever done. And it, it, oh, everybody loves it. They, they, you just, just a little sprinkle of those pumpkin seeds over that. And now we add a little more zinc to our diet, just like you see right there. Now, here's the problem. Most people, when they do that, if you were going to cook these vegetables up right now, what is the first thing everybody puts in a pot before you burn a stove is water. But remember, you can't change, but we're going to change you today. Because here's what happens is, everybody's done it from your mother, your grandmother's grandmother. They poured the water over the vegetables, you placed it on the stove, and you turned your temperatures up to high. Then you become what we call the proverbial pot watcher. You sneak up on your vegetables, and you poke them. Now, what you're basically doing at this point is you're checking the texture of the foods. Now, if anybody knows anything about that guy, Einstein, he said something that made a lot of sense. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Let me show you what the reaction is if you're going to use water to cook with your vitamins, your nutrients, your flavors, and your energy all go in the water. But see, we never notice the water because we dump it down the drain. So at this point forward, all the show is is common sense. That's all it is. We're going to cook these without any water at all. But the way to be able to do this is we have to add seven layers of metal, which is what we did. We got seven layers of metal. We'll tell you about that in a second. But we have to have that cover. The cover is what they call a vapor cover, vapor seal cover, or I call it the flutter cover. Designed and engineered so that when this reaches the perfect temperature, do you know what the perfect temperature of cooking is, Jim? It's 180 degrees. Okay? That's the perfect cooking. There's where you save your enzymes, nutrients, vitamins, and everything else. Well, when this reaches 180 degrees, the cover will start to flutter or steam. Oh, like an old pressure cooker. Similar to the old pressure cooker. But what's going to do is going to do one of these numbers are going to steam. It's going to actually tell you you're cooking too hot so you don't burn the foods. You can't make a mistake. Now you become the hero in your kitchen right there. Now, why those are cooking, here's my favorite part of the show. I love this part of the show because, men, uh, uh, there's only two ways you'll ever see this cook. We're out here at the fly-in once a year, the state fair down in Milwaukee, where I'll be after this, or you invite me 
into your home. I come in and I cook you a full seven course meal for you and 12 guests. It's the only way you'll ever see, and we provide all the food. Now that's the only way you'll ever see this cook or touch it. But out here at the fly-in, we come out once a year, we do incredible discounts. But I gotta tell you, as a man, when I walk through the kitchen, right, let's put this, I walk through a garage usually to get to the kitchens. When I walk through the garage, man, you know where I'm going with this? We have every tool and toy there is. Men have thousands upon thousands of dollars of tools in their garage. I walk into the kitchen, these beautiful, gorgeous kitchens, and the part that touches our food every day, this is what everybody's cooking on. That's what you hit. Don't laugh. A lady at my last show, she said, I wish I had a set look that good. I had another lady accuse me of getting her cabinets. Come on in, guys. You'll have some fun. This one here, who remembers the old Revere wear? This is what people used to get when they got married. Now, the problem with this one was, oh, great cooker because it was stainless steel. The problem was it was thin. And because it was thin, everything stuck to it. Well, in the 1940s, when this pan was invented, something else got invented by the DuPont Company. In 1948, because of this pan right here, two of the worst chemicals ever hit our planet. Everybody here knows anything about Vietnam? One of them was Agent Orange. The second worst, and actually worse than Agent Orange, because it affected the world, and that was Teflon. Now, for any of you that have done your homework, if you haven't, let me help you out. There was a program uh, about it went off the air about three years ago. It was called The Devil We Know. Now, if you want to remember that, I'll write it down for you before you leave. And the other one was called Black Water. What happened was DuPont was making this for over 20 years. Nobody knew how bad it was until the people down the river in West Virginia were contaminating cancers they never heard of. The animals were dying. Plant life was dying. Nobody knew what was going on. So what did they do? The government traced it back, those chemicals, up the river to the DuPont company and found out that the ladies that were working in the factory were having numerous babies with birth defects around those chemicals. They went up on the roof of the plant. There was nothing but dead birds on the roof. Really? And they couldn't figure out what was happening when the smokestacks were going. The birds were dropping out of the ground. That's why they, anybody that had Teflon, they used to say, do not have any birds in your house if you cook with this because if you cook it too hot, it would create a poisonous gas. For your birds they would die anyway they didn't know but i think our government would have shut that down but they didn't let me tell you what our government did they put two directions on it one said never use a metal utensil because it would come off the other one said when it starts to come off what are you supposed to do with the pan throw it away now i'm a baby boomer i'm 64 years old let me tell you what the baby boomers did for 50 years we threw it away here was the bad part it was leached into every water system in the United States because we threw it away for over 50 years before they took it off the market. Everybody out here at the fly-in, you know what, Judy, has some form of Teflon in their blood. It'll be there for the next 125 years. <laughs> the good news is they took it off the market, 1999, changed the molecule structure. They sold the rice drill company in North Carolina, changed the molecule structure, one molecule, and created something called ceramic. Cookware. Now, you may not know it as the term ceramic, but let me help you out because you'll know it as names. Paula Dean, Rachel Ray, Pioneer Woman. Every chef in the country put their name on it. They jumped on the bandwagon. Even that lady that got put in jail, what was her name? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Martha, Martha, Martha Stewart. Everybody put their name on it. But the first one that came out was didn't have a, a, a name. It was called the Green Pan. Do you know why? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was called the Green Pan. 1999, this pan evolved. And if you remember the infant commercial on TV where the guy would blow the egg out, the egg would fly out of the pan. I never seen it land. For all I know, the egg is still flying through the air. It never hits the bottom. But here, what the problem was, the green started coming off just like the black in the Teflon. And then they realized what was happening. If anybody here knows anything about metallurgy, when you heat up aluminum, it expands. This stuff was going to come off in your foods no matter what you wanted. And the only problem was it was only one molecule away from plastic. Holy cow. I'm telling you, this thing was stuff was horrible. By the way, uh, I smell it. You smell it? Well, you're starting to see it too. It's starting to steam. But what happens is once you can spin that cover, just like that, you're now at 180 degrees. Take it off the stove. Watch what happens as the steam goes away. The lid just locked down. At this point, every vitamin, 
every nutrient, every flavor is locked inside this pan. Now I am a fan of saving money. No more energy is needed. Because of the thickness of the pan, everything will finish cooking inside the pan. We need no more energy at all. So I'm gonna actually finish cooking these vegetables right there without any more energy at all. Why can we do this? It is the seven layers of metal letting us cook from the bottom up, the sides in and the top down. Cooking absolutely perfect every single time right there. Now while those are cooking right there, Go ahead, ask away. This is an induction stove, and I'm going to tell you about this in a second. I have one. I, I, I bought for this little You have an induction stove. Give me knuckle. I love you. I so, Thank yeah, you. Magnetic. I'm going to tell you okay, all about okay, it. Okay, okay, um, okay. It's uh, this. Uh, we'll, we'll go. We're okay. almost there. Okay. Um, Sorry. I lead into that because they had a 10 year lifespan with this. So then when they said, okay, we got to take it off the market or phase it out, the miracle skill it evolved, which was the red copper. Okay, now you, you both look pretty educated to me. Let me let you in a little secret. There is no copper anywhere near this pan in any way, shape, or form. No different, there's no copper anywhere near this egg. And they look exactly the same color. Let me tell you something, what everybody did though. They got one home, so excited, the term non-stick. So what did we do? You took the egg out there, you cracked the egg in there, and it stuck. And it stuck real good, because no one read the directions. Let me tell you what the directions say. When you get this pan home, you're supposed to oil it. You put it in the oven at 300 degrees, and you bake it for 20 minutes. Wipe it out with oil again, and now you can do eggs without oil. <laughs> well, what did I just do? Now, I grew up on a farm in southern Missouri. <laughs> Are you, are you from Wisconsin all your life? Okay, you're from what? Where are you from? Wisconsin. All your life? No, Oregon. Oregon? Oregon, California. Oh, wow. My favorite place in the world, Astoria. Do you know why I went to Astoria? Because of the movie Kindergarten Cop. I had to go see the town Astoria. Don't know why I did, but it looks exactly the same as it did on the movie. But I, did you uh, go to Telema? What? Did you know where Telema Yes. Did you really? Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I always bring this stuff up. I don't know why I bring this up. But uh, people, I grew up on a farm in southern Missouri. If you have to oil it and put it in the oven, there was a term we used on the farm years ago with a cast iron skillet called seasoning the pan. You had to season. Now, the cast iron skillet always had two functions, cooking out of and a weapon. <laughs> okay. Uh, not that I'm talking from experience. Yeah, we don't want to go there. Okay. We'll come back to the cast iron. That was my grandmother's. We'll come back to that in a second. But you have to season them. Now, I did not know this until a couple weeks ago. One of my customers brought this to my attention. She remodeled her kitchen. Went out and bought a brand new $7,000 glass top stove. Any idea what these rings did to her glass top stove? Scratched the heck out of it. You're right. One of the greatest features you will love about this cookware when you get it to your kitchens is you can use it on any stove. Some people have gas. Those are people I asked to get out. <laughs> no, I'm a gas stove. You can use on a gas stove, electric stove, and now on the new induction stoves. Now, if you're not familiar with it, I'm going to familiarize you with the induction stove. I'm going to do an egg for you guys. And as I show you how to do an egg in stainless steel, here's a secret. Do you know why you had to oil this pan? Because eggs are solid protein. They have never made a, a pan on this planet today that you can do eggs without oil. I've tried all of them. But knowing that, if you're going to use oil, what is the healthiest oil to cook with? Now, the answer I get the most is olive oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil. Everyone will lower your cholesterol. They're good for your heart, they're good for your blood, as long as you don't cook with them. <laughs> See, once you start cooking with these things, the temperature breaks the molecule structure down in these oils. So then people say, well, then if that's the case, what about canola oil, vegetable oil, or peanut oil? Those I could do in high heat, but now I'm dealing with the nasty word, saturated fats. For any of you that are fighting weight, cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, heart condition, don't care what it is, you want to be looking up coconut oil. I can do it at high temperature, low temperature, any temperature. If you look on the back of the can, it says zero, 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 zero. 
as I do share this with everybody out here, uh, some people tell me in my demonstrations, they say, well, I don't like the flavor of coconut. If you'll do it in a spray form, it doesn't change the flavor of the foods. Okay, so as I show you how to do the egg and the stainless steel, the other thing we're going to use the induction stove. One of the things I show everybody, I'm not going to see it in my lifetime. But in about the next 30 years in our country, you won't see gas, you won't see electric, you will see induction. My son, who's in the Navy now 14 years, taking after his father, my son has been in the Navy now 14 years, um, just came back from Japan. Every home, every apartment in Japan now uses induction stoves. They work off a of very low energy and magnetic vibrations. I can actually take and put a paper towel on there. When I turn the stove on, the only thing that gets hot is the pan and what is inside the pan. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. I'm going to do it for you right here. But as I show this everybody out here, to do the egg, the first thing we have to do, let me fix my hair again here. The first thing we have to do is turn the stove on. Now, Chad, why do we turn the stove on? For heat? Well, you can't cook an egg in a cold skillet. <laughs> it just kind of sits there. I tried that one more. It just lays there, okay? Actually, what we're going to do, we're going to create perfect even heat. So we're going to get even heat distribution. Now, I will also mention this. Always use your oils if you can in the spray form. Pennies on the dollar. I am father of five. I am the father everybody hated. I'm the father that liked to save money. Turn off the heat, turn down the air conditioning, shut the windows. I was that father. My children, you're going to laugh, would open up the refrigerator. They thought it was a TV set. They would stare at the food. Now, I would tell my children to take a picture, shut the door. Now, you can't do that anymore because all the kids have cameras on their phones. They can't do that anymore. So, if, But if you'll use it in a spray, pennies on the dollar. Now, if I was doing an omelet or scrambled egg, I would go all the way around the pan. I don't have to do that with this. All I have to do is touch the bottom of the pan where I think the egg is going to touch. So basically, I go one, two, two seconds. That's all you need. This thing better last you months. Take your egg, just like you see right here. We're going to drop the egg in the skillet, just like you see right here. Now, once I drop the egg in the skillet, this next part of the show is for all the men that sit in my show or watch my demonstration, I tell all the men, turn your temperature down to low. Now, why do I address this to men? Has anybody here ever watched a man cook in the kitchen? Uh, no, I just <laughs> like, have met, but How many of you have ever heard the phrase, get her done? <laughs> okay, that's men cooking in the kitchen. Let's crank that sucker up, baby, and let's get her done. And then all of a sudden, you take the flavor, the vitamins and nutrients, and everything else. You want to do everything with this cookware to save money. You want to retain the flavor, turn it down to low. So we're going to do everything on low heat, just like you see right there. Go ahead, ask a question. Why the paper towel? Do I? Why the paper towel? Just to show you that you could use it with the paper, just for, just for demonstration. No, no, I. this is strictly for the demonstration for the show here. Okay, now, while the egg is cooking, I want to... Do any of you know in the group here, does anybody here know what disease have been linked to your old aluminum? Pots of pains. Thank you. The answer was Alzheimer's. Judy, at least you said it right. This this morning a lady Oh no, this morning a lady jumped up, she yelled out Anheuser's. <laughs> I thought she was thirsty. Okay, it's not Anheuser, okay. It's called Alzheimer's. It's the number three killer in our seniors today. Now I bring this up in ten a, a little bit more than most of our people because I had a family member who died of dementia. It's a very horrible disease. When people get Alzheimer's, they actually have uh, eight times more aluminum on their brains than people that die of natural causes. They banned aluminum from 16 major countries in the world. All the countries that have what we call socialized medicine. Any country pays for medicine, you don't find aluminum pots and pans on the shelf. Now, some people have fear. Some people are afraid of heights. I'm not afraid of heights. I'm, as a diver in the Navy, I'm not afraid of being underwater. Let me tell you what my biggest fear in life is. I have nine beautiful grandchildren, and I want to remember them the rest of my life. Do everything you can to get aluminum away from your body, not only through cooking, your aluminum foil, your deodorants, look up aluminum free. Get as much away from aluminum as you can. Doctor gives you a prescription on medicine, ask him, is there aluminum in that medicine. 
talk to him about getting medicines without aluminum. Now, uh, so you want to do everything you can to get aluminum out of your diet in any way, shape, or form that you can. That stuff is a horrible disease. You know, I died physically once, then mentally the second time. While the egg is cooking, I need to turn the egg. Please remember, I am a professional. You may not want to try this in your kitchen. You may not want to try this in your own kitchen, but let me show you how to turn your egg. Okay. Did you see that? <laughs> if, if you missed it, I'm going to turn it again. Oh, by the way, take a look at this. Here's your paper towel. And just like I said, you can cook. You don't have to worry about these instructions. So they're absolutely wonderful. We're cooking with our egg just like you see right here. Now, as I do show this, how you doing, sir? You look like you were in the Navy. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> anyway, as I show this to everybody, as I show, how many of you like easy in the kitchen? How about just simple? I like easy, I like simple. Take a look at this. Here's your egg, just as perfect as you can do. All you had to do was flip it. Just, it is the first surgical stainless steel cookware, non-stick on the market today. Take a look at this. Here's your egg over medium, just like you see right there. As I show this to everybody out here, what I'm gonna do, do not do with any of your old pans at home. Remember, it's American made. You take any of your old pans at home and dump them in cold water hot. I can assure you most of your pants will warp, they will buckle, they will bend. You'll never have to worry about this with this cooker. It will never warp, buckle, or bend because it's also warranted forever. When you're done with it, you hand it down to your children who hand it down to their children. It's unconditionally warranted forever. How about a wet paper towel? You're cleaned up, you're done, and you're out of the kitchen. I'm not a fan of doing dishes. Let's just dump it in the water, you're done, and you're out of the kitchen right there. As I show this everybody out here, cast iron's different. What's the first thing we do to a cast iron skill uh, when you get one? Question. Go first ahead, go again. With that egg, if I can't do this, can I use a spatula? spatula. <laughs> okay. spatula. Yes, yes, I want you to use a metal spatula. I'm not a fan of plastics in any way, okay. shape, or form, okay? Um, cast iron, anybody here still use one? Okay. Best old cornbread maker. I live in a log cabin. I've got all Got the cornbread at the sink. Hey, this was my grandmother's, my mother's after hers, it's now mine. Now some of you are not going to believe what I'm about ready to share with you. When my mother and my grandmother was cooking, there was always a can that sat right in the middle of our stove that said grease or fat or lard. And, and, and here's the thing, they would save the oil every day. When they's done cooking, they had a can, they poured that oil back inside the can. It had a little thing to get rid of all the debris. The next morning she got up with a spoon, scooped all that old oil out. Never knew whether you were cooking last night's dinner, yesterday's lunch, or this morning's breakfast, because it all tasted like bacon. Now, we always put it in a can. As a matter of fact, only the people that were had a lot of money had the cans that said grease or lard on them. Now, when I was eight years old, my teacher asked me, she said, spell grease. I spelled it Folgers. <laughs> we use the Folgers can for God's sakes, okay? But we always put in a can because had any of you thought to put it in a jar, if you had to look at it, you probably wouldn't have ate it. But people don't realize it takes 115 degrees. Listen carefully. 115 degrees for this to liquefy. Now, if your body only reaches 98.6, where is it supposed to go when you put it inside your body? I'll show you. The average 11-year-old in the United States today's arteries already look like this right here. You have Burger King, McDonald's, and the Oshkosh EAA. <laughs> that stuff out there will kill you. By the way, I don't call them funnel cakes. I call them funeral cakes. Okay, but as I show this to everybody out here, Today, West Bend wanted to design the most perfect American-made cookware in the world today. And the only way they could do that was by using these three pieces. Why aluminum? Because aluminum heats up very fast. Why cast iron? Because cast iron would retain and hold the heat. So what they did so ingenious was they took three layers of aluminum, wrapped it around a cast iron skillet, we still didn't want you touching it, so they enclosed it between two layers of surgical stainless steel. Now you're at seven layers of metal. Then what did they do? They cut the base. The only cookware company in the world does it. Everybody's cookware at home, yours is 90 degrees. 
They cut it at a 45 degree angle for easy cleanup. Everybody I talk to that doesn't have this, all your cookware at home have rivets in the handles. Has anybody ever tried to clean around those rivets? Don't try, you can't. It is a bacteria that leaches into your foods. There's no rivets, no bacteria. You're eating healthier than you've ever eaten. The other thing they did for all of you that like to cook, never fails, you need a place to set your lid. So they designed the lids to go with the handle so you always had a place to put your lid. If you didn't like it on that side, you flipped it over to the other side. And if you wanted to hang your cookware up, your lid was always there waiting for you. Just like you see right there. I thought that was a cool feature until they invented this. Because we are the only 100% American-made cookware in the world today, the United States of America has allowed us to be the only cookware company in the world for anyone that has served in our armed forces to put your military emblem of your choice on the lid, just like you see right there. Of course, I was three years Navy, three years Marines. Which one do you think I have? I have them both. <laughs> as, I show, as I show this to everybody, that's what I got for being a corpsman. You know what I'm talking about, if you were in the Navy. West Bend wanted to design the most perfect cookware in the world. I only bring this up because our young society today is making a very grave error. Watch our kids today. They don't know how to buy quality American-made or companies that have been around for 116 years. What our kids are doing is they're shopping off of things like Amazon. How cheap can I go out? And by the way, how many of here's ever bought anything off of Have ever tried to get it replaced? It was a good luck try to get anything you want replaced. But I bring this up only because you can look up waterless cookware on the website, it looks the same. It's shiny, it's pretty, it's got a black handle. Here's the difference. This is made in China, this is made in America. How you tell the difference between quality and cheap is you take a magnet, put a magnet to the bottom of it. If a magnet doesn't stick to it, don't walk away, run. Because if this don't stick to it, everything else will. That's crazy. <laughs> and you can't use it on the induction stove. Oh, I know that. This is how you know you got the real McCoy, the best of the best. That's how you know you got it right there. Yeah. That is the real McCoy. Guys, don't sit down unless you're with a parent, okay? You got to be with a mom or dad and sit through the show. But as I show this to everybody out here, I pass off and, sir, would you do me a favor? What's your name? Al. Al? Al. Al. By the way, aren't those great? I have one in my home. Love it. Love it. You're going to love that. Would you rub the bottom of that? I'm going to ask you a question, Al. Ain't that the smoothest bottom you ever felt? <laughs> don't, don't answer that question. No that, last guy did that too. Wife jumped up, said it better not be. Okay, here's what we do. I want you to feel the weight of this. Oh, really better than that. Feel the weight of this. That's the one made in China. Okay? So proud, by the way, so proud of our American made products. When you call our office, somebody that speaks English will talk to you. There's a whole, there's a feature just by itself. But as you pass it around, I'll let you pass that back to Hal there and then feel this one right there. I feel that one. There's your difference. That's American made. I'll take that from you, sir. Thank you. That's American made at its best. Right there. Oh my gosh. I love this stuff. 44 years I've been doing this. And, and, and I, 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 I can't. I love my job. I love what I do. My goodness. It's, I have the only thing in the world people have forever. It's so nice to be with this. Now, we're going to take a look at the vegetables. And then I'm, I'm going to give you one of my new cookbooks, Judy. So I'll make sure you get one of my new cookbooks and how to. Let Hal feel that. Oh, he already did. Okay. Anyway, where am I at with this? Okay. So, these are the vegetables now that we cook with no water. we got our vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E. we got it all in here, this pan right here. But here's the problem. The next time any of you cook, if you boil microwave or steam your foods. If the water looks like this, you are better off to throw the foods away and drink the water. Your energy, your vitamins, your nutrients, and your flavor is right there. Let me tell you what our young society is doing today. They take the energy of the foods. You start by pouring the energy down the drink, and what if our young society is doing today? They're spending gross amounts of money on energy drinks not realizing this is one of those chemicals that will turn your pancreas upside down. Nobody tells our kids this. They're spending gross amounts of money on energy drinks. Do yourself a favor, get away from energy drinks and don't worry about it. By the way, then what do you do? You dump out the vitamins and nutrients and you start taking supplements. Then you dump out the flavor and what do you add the foods to give it flavor? Butter, salt. Yesterday, a lady said brown sugar. 
I said, where are you from? She said, Atlanta, Georgia. And you start throwing us all over your foods and you say, honey, I don't know why we can't lose any weight. I don't know why your cholesterol level won't go down. Don't know why you have high blood pressure. This one here, they call it heart attack in a box. This one here, they give it a name, they call it low fat butter. You know why they call it low fat butter? Because when you eat it, it puts fat on the lower part of your butts. <laughs> okay, okay. now that's my favorite one. Okay, they're not going to get any better than that. Okay, but as I show this to everybody out here, Jimmy, your vegetables are gone. But has anybody here ever had hospital food before? It's bland. There's no flavor to it. The first thing you want to, and you think the hospitals could get it right. Why is it when you go into a hospital today, there's over 400 doctors and only two dietitians? Do you realize we're 400 dietitians? We'd only need two doctors. <laughs> wow, you look like a Cardinal fan over there. Yeah, me too. That's how I recognize him. But then I'm from St. Louis, so that's why we do. Okay. But as I show this to everybody, I, where are you from? Um, Olivet. Olivet? St. Louis suburb. Yeah, I know. Uh, Arnold. Okay. All right. My daughter is Ch Chesterfield, son, and, and, and Morrison. Okay. Now, look up here at me. We're going to go through this real quick. Come on in. Don't be bashful. You ain't going to bite your head off. We're going to sample some foods here in just a minute. But as I show this to everybody, did you bring me a sucker? No, Man, I can't believe you did. Okay. As I show this to everybody, I relate, these are the vegetables we cook without any water at all. And as I show this to everybody out here, I want you to look at the color because they're the same color they were when we threw them in there. This is how you know you got it right. You've now become the hero in your kitchen. Your greens will be greens, your purples will be purples, your yellows will be yellow. But here's where it comes out, done absolutely perfect. Take a look at your vegetables, just like you see right there. In about eight minutes cooking time, you are done, you are finished up and you were out of the kitchen. Now, I do have to share this with everybody because some of you that cook don't want to set your pan on the counter because you don't want to burn up the counter. They designed the lids as a hot plate so you never have to worry about burning up the counter. Some of the wives have demanding husbands. Your husband comes home and says, honey, I thought supper would be on the table. Ladies, you say, fine, sit down, shut up and eat. Give him supper on the table, just like they asked for. But see, we do this for a reason. We know that after dinner, we know that all men jump up and volunteer to do dishes, right? Okay, let me rephrase that. Regardless of who does the dishes, Anybody here ever use vinegar and water to clean with? Taught to me by my grandmother 40 years ago, 50-50, white vinegar to us, cleans everything. It's good around food. It breaks down bacteria, and it costs nothing. I'll tell you what, how many of you remember COVID tried to go buy cleaners at the store? Well, you know what was still there that you forgot about? White vinegar. It was still on the shelf. How about a wet paper towel? I don't like doing dishes. You're cleaned up, you're done, and you're out of the kitchen. I was doing a show a couple weeks ago. This cute little lady was watching my show. She got so excited. She come run over. She goes, Mark. She goes, I love it. She goes, I want it all. <laughs> yeah, I smile too. She goes, no, I want everything you got. How can I get it? I said, well, dear, credit card, layaway, 90 days, same as cash. Everyone do it. It's up to you. She said, well, that's easy. She said, here's my go card. I want the biggest set you got. And I looked at that lady and I made the biggest mistake of my career. How? I just very politely said, how old are you? Gentlemen, very politely, never ask a woman how old she is. She looked at me and she said, excuse me. And I didn't catch the hint. I'm from Missouri. No, I asked her again. I said, how old are you? And she looked at me and she said, let me tell you something, Sonny. She, I'm 64 years old. She called me Sonny. She, let me tell you, she says, for 45 years, I've won a set of this cookware. I'm 84 years old. She said, 45. She said, my husband's had his guns, his knives, his boats, his rods, his reels, his golf clubs, his tools, his toys. She said, 45 years, I just wanted a matching, healthy set of this cookware. She goes, I'm not going to get it because I need it because God knows at 84, I don't need it. She goes, but don't you think at 84, I finally deserve it? And she said, besides, at 84, she said, he's not around to stop me anymore. <laughs> You're laughing. That wasn't funny at the time. I'm thinking her husband died, went to see Jesus. I said, dear, I'm sorry your husband passed away. She goes, he didn't pass away. I go, excuse me. She goes, oh, no, he's 84 years old like me. She goes, I don't take him out with me anymore. She goes, he's at home watching his big screen TV. I said, you mean to tell me you're going to buy all this cookware? You're not going to talk it over with your husband first? She said, at 84, she said, I learned from him a long time ago that it's a whole lot easier to get forgiveness than it was to ever get permission. Now, 
I, I don't know if that's true or not by any means. But ladies and gentlemen, as I share this with everybody out here, we're going to let everybody just do a quick sample of the foods. I'm from the country. You don't have to sample these. But how many of you are trying to eat healthier? How many of you are... By the way, too, one of the reasons we're out here, ladies and gentlemen, the diet that I'm showing you right here, we call it the pilot diet for a reason. Because if anybody knows anything about flying, anything about planes, your plane, you have to get an annual on your plane every year. Guess what your body has to get every year, too? A physical to make sure you can fly that plane. As a matter of fact, what we're going to do, and I'm going to give you all an opportunity to do this. I believe you have to. We'll start. Let's start over here. San Francisco. What's that? What's that hat say? I can't read it. It's the San Francisco Giants. Oh, yeah, the Giants. Get out. No, I'm just, I'm just juggling. Try a carrot right there. Try a carrot. My folks from St. Louis, try a carrot right there. They're sweet as sugar. Everybody's afraid of those carrots. I'm going to tell you right now. You talk about one of them. Oh, she's going to try some more. There you go. How try those carrots right there. You want to talk about something wonderful right there. You guys down here, where are you from? Where? Des Moines. You know what? They eat healthy in Des Moines. We do the state fair in Des Moines every year. Make sure you come see my guy. I was going to be out there this year. His name will be Jeff. Come on in. Grab a seat right there, Judy. And go ahead and grab a carrot. I want you to try this. Carrots, broccoli. Pick one. A carrot, first. A carrot first. Do me a favor. Try a carrot first. Because they're sweet as sugar. Now pick your favorite vegetable out. If you watch the whole show, you get double dip. Okay, so take a look. at Now guess what we don't taste? There's no butter, no salt. They're sweet. Everything is on these foods. You want more energy? You got it right here. You want to lose weight? You got it here. We did it all. We covered everything with this American-made cooker, just like it's right here. Now, guy, you got to be with a parent to sit through the show. It's the only requirement that we make, okay? And got to be with a parent. But as I show this to everybody out here, yeah, if you're not 21, mom or dad's got to be with you so I don't get in trouble. But as I show this to everybody out here, ladies and gentlemen, the dinner's done. The three greatest features I can tell you about the cooker is this. West Bend's Kitchen Craft, the number one rated cooker in the world today, is unconditionally warranted forever, ever, and ever. You cannot hurt this cookware. What's the next greatest feature is where is this cookware made? I'm very proud to stand up here and show everything in my booth is 100% made in the United States of America. Y'all can applaud. Our factory for this cookware is right down the road about 45 minutes and the company is West Bend, Wisconsin right there. By the way, our slow cooker base, you ladies will appreciate over there, is made in St. Louis, Missouri. We do not let anything outside the United States touch this cookware other than Americans, just like you see right here. What's the next greatest feature is cost. How many of y'all would like to know what the cookware costs? Well, I've got good news for everybody out here. This cookware is not cheap. <laughs> but I say that with all the pride and all the sincerity in the world, because if anybody's looking for something cheap, Walmart stays open 24 hours throughout the country. You can buy all your cheap stuff down there. But folks, this ain't cheap. It's the most expensive cookware in the world today because we keep buying it over and over again. So my question to everybody is this. If you could walk through your front door today, everything in your home you only have to buy once. Financially, how rich would you be? How many times will you do this? One time. Now, as I share this with everybody out here, also, if you'll look up here at me, two years ago out here at the fly-in, a lady walked up and gave me this pan. Now, there's a reason why I keep this pan. I show it to everybody. When she walked up, she goes, Mark, how long have you been doing this? And um, two years ago was 42 years. She said, how long have you been coming to the fly-in? Two years ago, it was 28 years. And she said, the reason I'm asking this, and I said, yeah, I want to know why you're asking me this question. She said, for 20 years, she said, my mother and I have been coming out to the fly, and she said, my mother loved you. She said, mom said, if anything happens to me, go down to the fly-in and take Mark, one of my pans. There was a reason. She knew I collected all the antique cookware, like the piece up here on my microwave, from 1906, 116 years years old. I got a set sitting out there in front of that gentleman up over there on my baker's rack from 1958. That is 64 years old. She pulled this out of a bag. She said, promise me you'll never get rid of it. I made her that promise and I stand good for every promise I ever made. It's called integrity. She goes, but I have two surprises for you. Mom wanted you to have a piece of her cookware. All the rest of us got to share. It was her legacy. 
to create a legacy in her home. She said, but here's your two surprises. They found her receipt booklet in a drawer from 1914, 108 years old, and it still has our kitchen craft stamp on the bottom of it. You buy this cookware one time, it's the best investment you'll ever make because you only do it once. Now, I know some of you are sitting down resting, some of you are concerned with quality Trisha Holmes, and some of you don't know why you're here. <laughs> Anybody that would like to get a brochure and a prices at the end of the show, you stick around for about two, three minutes because we're giving away over $900 in free cookware to 12 people out here. So today's one of the biggest days out here because of the night show this evening. Are you all here for the night show? Are you going to stick? Oh my gosh, it's absolutely wonderful. You will have such a great time this evening doing this. Go ahead. Do what? They're going to do it tomorrow? What? It's if they canceled, it would be because of weather. But I, I haven't heard that yet. But if it has, thank you for that information. Okay. Now, if you'll look up here at me, we're going to go through the sets with everybody uh, and, and do this. And guys, and how old are you, hon? How old are you? sure that everybody can see what we're doing because I'm giving away free cookware. We ain't giving it to the 12 year olds. That's hard. Anyway, <laughs> but as I share this with everybody, have you been to the fly-in before? You've been to fly been flying before how? I'd seen you last year if I don't remember. Didn't you sit in my show last year how? I probably did. <laughs> I think I've seen, I've seen you before. Have you guys been to the fly-in before? You haven't. Thank you very much. And you've been here. I ain't playing nobody's shirt. Okay. The uh, reason I'm saying it because a lot of you know me. You've seen me out here for over 28 years. Now 30 years out here at the fly-in. And as I show this to everybody out here, if you don't know me, most of you will know the company's been around since 1906. And here's the best news of all. You don't stay in business for 116 years and not do something right. Let me tell you what we did right. We kept everything American made. How many of you believe in American made products? What's the next thing they did? This cookware's never been sold in any store, and it will never be sold in any store. There's only two places you will ever see it or touch it. That's out here at the Flying, or you invite me into your home. I come in and cook you a full seven-course meal in your home. That's the only way you'll ever see this cookware other than here. Out here at the Flying, we come out here once a year, though, and we do 50% off discounts or sales. How many of you like sales? How many of you like quality? I have a sign on the back of my that says it all. It says the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. What that means is when you buy junk, what do you get? Junk and it becomes a vicious cycle. So what I'm gonna do, I have to do this as a group. I'm giving away a lot of free cookware this year. We're celebrating our 40 year anniversary out here at the fly-in. So I wanna make sure that everybody gets one of these. We'll do this as a group. You're gonna write your sale prices down right there and right there. You do get to take the top copy with you. But do me a favor, do not call my office tomorrow, the next day or the next day, and say, Mark, I'd like to get the specials at the fly-in. They are strictly for right here. So as I show this to you guys, you get one right there. You ladies get one. You're going to want to jump on these specials because when you get when you get to the St. St. Charles Home Show this year, the price will be double. Here you go. Right there, discount it, discount it. One for you guys right there. There you go. Okay, now. You might want to scoot down a couple chairs so you can see me and do that, okay? Now, if you look up here at me, as I can show this to everybody out here, if everybody can see me, okay, you'll notice, I'll put my little stool up right here. You notice that we have three sections of cookware, one, two, and three. Now, everything on the top row is what everybody wants. From here down is what everybody needs. And basically what I mean by that, if you look at the top row right here, we started off at the beginning show. You guys came in a little bit late. We were using the kitchen cutter to cut the vegetables. You remember that, Judy? So that's what we cut the vegetables with. Now, I got a lot of new stuff this year. If you look here, right here in the very center, it's called a trio. Now, to show you where that trio is, it's right here behind me. You get the, the one we did the egg in, the egg skillet, our new baked pan, 
and of course the great big jumbo, what you see right there, saute pan. As I show you the trio, is there anybody in this group that still bakes? Does anybody still bake anymore? And the reason I'm asking that question, has anybody here ever baked? You put your baker in, that's what you, well that's okay. But that's what you buy in your local store. That's what it feels like right there. Okay. Oh, every, everybody, that's, that's what we buy at our locals. They already know. Okay, so what did we do? We engineered and we designed the first of its kind, the only five-ply bakeware in the world. You need to come over here if you're going to be videoing, Chad, over here. As I show this to everybody out here, it's the only five that will never bend. It will never warp. It will never buckle. That, yeah, I feel the weight of this one right here. It's the only bakeware on the market today that you can use not only in the oven, you can put it on your stove, you can put it on the grill. It'll never warp, it'll never buckle, it'll never bend. As a matter of fact, do I have, uh, as you try looking at it, do I have any gun enthusiast in here? Do you know if you take that down to the gun range, it'll stop a nine millimeter at 30 yards. So if somebody breaks in your house, <laughs> okay. Anyway, that was, I'm sorry. I was saving that for my St. Louis people. But anyway, as I show this to everybody out here, that is the trio. And does anybody here still use a crock pot or a slow cooker? Now, this is going to be your favorite piece in just a second, as we're going to be giving them away. But the base, remember I told you the base is made in St. Louis, Missouri. We'll talk about that in a second. But that is your gourmet cooker. So everything across the top is what everybody wants. From here down is what everybody needs. And if you look up here at me, the second level down, the second section is called the classic or starter set. That is right here, everything on the top row. Now, three features I didn't get a chance to show you over there, I'd like to show you, because everybody loves the fact that the lids fit inside the handles. So if you want to hang your cookware up, you can hang your cookware up. But what they also did was they designed the lids to fit inside the deep pans. So if you wanted to hang your cookware up, your lid was always there waiting for you. The next thing that they did when they engineered the cookware, they designed it so one pan fits inside the other. One pan fits inside the other, and everything on this table will fit in one cupboard with this much space right here. How many of you all have cookware spread out from one side of the kitchen to the other? How many people here could use some more cupboard space? We all could. Everything on this top row is what they call the classic or the starter set as you see it right here today. By the way, here is the new stuff. You're gonna love it. Is there anybody in this group that still bakes that knows what I mean by the term double boiler? That's where you always years ago took one pan, put it inside the other to make like a hollandaise sauce or candy or cheese sauce, chocolate. What did they do? They added three more layers of metal. Now you do everything in one pan. Now my wife and I were what they call empty nesters. The kids are gone. This makes the best two person stir fry you ever made. And then what did they do? They designed these pans so they would be interchangeable so I could flip this over, turning my three quart to a five quart pan. Why would you do that? Because now, because the molecules transfer heat from one pan to the other, you can now do something called pyramid cooking, cooking a whole meal on one burner. Now, would you do this every day? No. But how many of you need it more than four burners around Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Easter? You'll find out this comes in real handy. Everything on your top row is your classic starter beginner set. If you're serious about your cooking needs in your kitchen, this is a new set. For the fly-in, it is called the deluxe set. It's the middle set. And what the middle set is, is everything you see on the table. That set, you get the small, you get the medium, and you get the large. But now don't forget about the works. It is everything. We have a third set called the works, where you get everything you see up here. Not only everything in front of me, but you get a full set of bakeware. They added the large square griddle. We added an eight quart stock pot, the largest stainless steel wok in the world today. Everything you see up here is called the works. When you get that set, I come into your kitchens. I take all your old cookware out. I put all this cookware in and I do windows and toilets for two weeks. 
Don't don't laugh. This 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 morning, a lady said, "Okay." She said, "I'll take two. She said, "I'll keep you a month." It was a joke. Now, don't forget with any sets when your cookware arrives, you're also going to get a cookbook. Would anybody like to meet the author of all the recipes in the cookbook? You're looking at them. I'll make sure all of you get one of my signed cookbooks before you get out of here. I designed ninety percent of the recipes inside the cookbook, as you see right there. Now, I'm also going to give you a special price on the kitchen cutter. We're gonna give you a special price on the trio, but we're gonna give it away to three very lucky people today at each one of our demonstrations. And does anybody here still use a crock pot or a slow cooker? What's the hardest thing about using a crock pot or a slow cooker? They tell me they're hard to clean. So what did they do? They designed it where it would come off the heater. So perfect that I could use this on the stove as a four quart pot. For any of you that like to use your oven, the handles and knobs are oven safe in the oven up to 400 degrees, making everything I have up here oven safe and dishwasher safe. They didn't stop there when they made the base. They designed the base so all the pieces in your classic set would fit the base so you could downsize your foods and keep them hot or warm. They didn't stop there either. Little did I know this until a couple weeks ago. One of my customers brought this to my attention. She makes her homemade fajitas on here. I had no idea that could be done. But I have to show you this because, ladies and gentlemen, everybody always asks what it is. It's brand new. It's the most trivial thing. At 44 years I've been doing this. I've never seen it's trivial or perfect. This is. You have no idea what this is. It's called the panhandler. And look what they did. I know that sounds funny, but look what they did. They designed this so this would fit the handles of all your cookware. Your spoons and your spatulas fit backwards just like you see right there. Your lid fits just like you see right there. And then all the drippings fall down into the pan just like you see right there. They literally thought of everything with this cookware.